Good morning and welcome to 101010 at Poets House, the poetry library in downtown New York City. Poets House is the place for poetry, poets, and all things verse. I'm Dave Johnson, poet and playwright and your host of 101010, where we invite you at 10 a.m. on weekdays for 10 minutes to write a new poem. And in 10 days, you'll have 10 new poems. This morning on 101010 times 2 here at Poets House, we are looking at the poet Stanley Kunitz. Stanley is so special to Poets House, mainly because he's one of the co-founders along with Elizabeth Cray. And his work, tr tremendous, tremendous work, has always inspired not only Poets House readers and Poets House uh, members and people who just come to Poets House, but he has inspired so many writers over the years. He even really has what he affectionately and they affectionately call his tribe of poets who have studied with him, read his work, and have really been a major part of his life, and he has been a major part of their lives and their careers as well. Today we're going to look at a poem that he wrote that actually tells a little story. We're going to look at a story poem, if you will, this morning, something that tells a little story. One thing that you should know about Stanley is that he lived a very, very long life and wrote for many, many years, probably at least, I would say, 80 years of his life he, he was writing uh, at a really powerful level. Um, this poem is called Halley's Comet, right? He's one of the only poets you may ever read or know uh, that actually lived long enough to see and experience two Halley's Comets. And this was an experience he wrote around the first one that he lived through. Halley's Comet. Miss Murphy in first grade wrote its name in chalk across the board and told us it was roaring down the storm tracks of the Milky Way at frightful speed. And if it wandered off its course and smashed into the earth, there'd be no school tomorrow. A red-bearded preacher from the hills with a wild look in his eyes stood in the public square at the playground's edge proclaiming he was sent by God to save every one of us, even the little children. Repent, ye sinners, he shouted, waving his hand-lettered sign. At supper, I felt sad to think that it was probably the last meal I'd share with my mother and my sisters. But I felt excited, too, and scarcely touched my plate. So Mother scolded me and sent me early to my room. The whole family's asleep except for me. They never heard me steal into the stairwell hall and climb the ladder to the fresh night air. Look for me, Father, on the roof of the red brick building at the foot of Green Street. That's where we live, you know. On the top floor, I'm the boy in the white flannel gown, sprawled on the coarse gravel bed, searching the starry sky, waiting for the world to end. Stanley Kunitz, Halley's Comet, right? An amazing, amazing poem, just so moving. How he opens this poem and this little story that he's telling, right? Of course, it's around an event, and he's telling this story. He starts off, a very specific time and place. And where is he? He's in Miss Murphy's first grade class, right? Miss Murphy, a character right away that we are introduced to, Miss Murphy in first grade wrote its name in chalk across the board and told us it was roaring down the storm tracks of the Milky Way at frightful speed, meaning Halley's Comet. She's introducing the comet, of course, to them. And if it wandered off its course and smashed into the earth, there'd be no school tomorrow. Right? And you can just imagine in first grade what that must have meant, right? And then this second character who comes in, a red-bearded preacher from the hills with a wild look in his eyes, stood in the public square at the playground's edge proclaiming he was sent by God to save every one of us, even the little children. Repent, ye sinners. Right there, he gives a piece of dialogue, right? Repent, ye sinners, he shouted, waving his hand-lettered sign. And then we move forward in the evening at supper. I felt sad to think that it was probably the last meal I'd share with my mother and my sisters. Poor kid, right? But I felt excited too. I mean, hey, if, if the world's going to end, I'm going to, this is going to be something, right? And scarcely touched my plate. 
So mother scolded me and sent me early to my room. The whole family is asleep, except for me. They never heard me steal into the stairwell hall and climb the ladder to the fresh night air. And then he has a little stanza break, and he's speaking to the father. Notice there's not a father in this poem, biological father that we talk about until this point, and also maybe the heavenly father too, right? Look for me, father, in capital F, father, on the roof of the red brick building, almost like a prayer, at the foot of Green Street. That's where we live, you know, on the top floor. I'm the boy in the white flannel gown, sprawled on this coarse gravel bed, searching the starry sky, waiting for the world to end. All right, just a magical moment in the poem. Stanley Kunitz, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to think for a few minutes this morning. Take about 10 minutes with this poem. I want you to think about a story around an event. It could be an event that happened or it could be, you know, something special in your own life or just a moment and see if you can tell the story in a little verse form this morning, right? When you see this poem, you're going to see that he also has a very specific line break. The thing that Stanley does so geniusly too in this poem and in many poems, is that when he's telling a story, each phrase begets the next phrase, in a sense, in terms of the line break. Miss Murphy in first grade, right? It's held in that one moment, wrote his name in chalk. And you see that image itself before you move on to line three, across the board and told us it was roaring down the storm tracks, right? So think about this story you're telling in a lyrical way, and with line break, right? And think about the phrasing, if you will. And each phrase is a new line. Let's see what you come up with. I'm going to try mine and you try yours. Let's see what we can make today. Okay, so today we're looking at Stanley Kunitz's Halley's Comet, right? And how he tells a little story in this moment, right, of, of this Halley's Comet. And how he opens this with Miss Murphy in first grade telling them about what this thing is and then how excited he gets and then goes home and, you know, can't even eat his dinner because he's so excited and also worried that uh, this is going to be the end of the world, right? So let's see what kind of little story we can come up with today. We're going to tell a little story in a lyrical form and we're going to try to do it in line breaks as well. Um, and just think about it in terms of the way that Stanley breaks each line is just like a little moment, a little phrase. In a, in, a, in a phrasing sort of way, if you will, the musicality kind of phrasing, if you will, as well as, as, as writing a phrase, right? So let's just see what we can come up with. I'm going to just start this and see where it goes. I have no idea where this is going to go. I'll just see what happens here. Miss, let's start with Miss. I wrote a series of poems years ago with this. Lady, Miss Allie. Right, Miss Allie. These Miss Allie poems. Let's see where this one's going to take us. Miss Allie invited us over on Saturday after a full day of plowing the fields. Fresh butter and cornbread and insisted We stay for seven o'clock TV and dinner. The pig, a pet of.
several hundred pounds sat at my feet as we watched green acres and ate till we couldn't do anything but sleep. I thought, is this TV or really how we live? Here we go, right? All right, let's see what we got here, right? You, you remember Green Acres? You might not, you have to, you have to look this up. Anyway, that was, uh, I think it was the sister of Zsa Zsa Gabor or something like that, right? And they came from Park Avenue, right? They were country, they came to the country. Anyway, they had a pig that lived in the house as well. And that was the experience, right? I was just thinking about, because we had a pig in the house too, right? Or at least she did. Miss Allie invited us over on Saturday after a full day of plowing the fields, fresh butter and cornbread, and insisted we stay for seven o'clock TV and dinner. The pig, a pet of several hundred pounds, I need a little comma here, sat at my feet as we watched Green Acres and ate till we couldn't do anything but sleep. I thought, is this TV or really how we live? That's my little story poem this morning. Let's see what you come up with. And when you get your story poem, share it with us at the address on the screen. I want to share one more poem of Stanley Kunitz's work with you this morning. This is from The Collected Poems. This poem is called The Layers. I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides from which I struggle not to stray. When I look behind, as I am compelled to look, before I can gather strength to proceed on my journey, I see the milestones dwindling toward the horizon and the slow fires trailing from the abandoned campsites over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Oh, I've made myself a tribe out of my true affections, and my tribe is scattered. How shall the heart be reconciled to its feast of losses? In a rising wind, the manic dust of my friends, those who fell along the way, bitterly stings my face. Yet I turn, I turn, exulting somewhat, with my will intact to go wherever I need to go. And every stone on the road precious to me, in my darkest night, when the moon was covered and I roamed through wreckage, a nimbus-clouded voice directed me, Live in the layers, not on the litter. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my book of transformations is already written. I am not done with my changes. Stanley Kunitz, Collected Poems. We'll see you next time right here on 101010 times 2 at Poets House.